Welcome back to the Community Strategy Podcast. I'm Deb Shell, your host here, and I've interviewed over 100 community leaders, business owners, and facilitators who give you the backstage pass to their community strategy. I'm a creator turned community builder, and after failing my launch in 2020, I discovered I had a passion for community events, cultivating belonging, and developing a strategy for success. As the author of Creator to Community Builder, Find Calm While Building Your Online Community, I encourage you to dig deep and go beyond the surface level marketing and understand your ideal member. As a community and marketing strategist, I've helped over 70 business owners in developing and implementing a launch plan for an online community course or membership. On this podcast, I share interviews with community builders just like you who have a message, a purpose, and who want to bring a group of humans together for a purpose. You are invited to join Community Builders with Purpose to connect with like-minded people who want to learn how to run, manage, and grow a online community. The community is free, so I hope you can join. Uh, it's a new place to share your community concept, ask questions about community building, and connect with us for an intentional community development strategy. Our members join programs and special events to continue learning and growing. The community is an ecosystem, a place where you can join no matter what stage you're in, beginner, intermediate, or advanced. I hope to see you inside. Now let's get started. Yes. Greetings and welcome back to the Community Strategy Podcast. My name's Deb, I am the host here, and we are excited today to talk with you about well-being. Uh, this is a live, we're recording this live for the Community Builders with Purpose space. And today I have Nicole Gray. She's gonna talk to us a little bit about well-being. She's an expert in that field. And I'll let you introduce yourself, Nikki, so go for it. Cool, thank you, Deb. So, uh, firstly, thank you so much for inviting me to be on this podcast and to be a part of the community, really. Um, so I am a well-being coach. Um, so I support entrepreneurs, I support business leaders and, and creatives, and I run one-on-one -on -one coaching programs as well as courses and workshops like this. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a whole community of um, individuals who just really want to work on their emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being. And just look at your energy levels. You can read how you're feeling on a specific day. There was one day something happened uh, with a family member in the morning, and I had meetings booked the whole day. And I was like, do you know what? I reached out to every single person. I was like, do you know what? Something happened in my family. I can't meet you. If that, like, no one's going to be like, how dare you come to our meeting? Like, no one cares. It's fine. You know, if you cancel on someone, you're generally canceling once, right? People aren't going to judge you by that. And if you reschedule and that kind of thing, it's fine. So take the time you need. Um, Cool. And then build some supportive. Oh, sorry. No. Yeah. Optimizing your workday. So time management techniques, guys. Pomodoro technique. I love it. That's what I use. Um, and use technology. Can you, explain, can you explain that one just in case people don't know? what? So, so sorry. Yeah. I just assume everyone knows it. I know. I me it. too. I would say that too. But just <laughs> people listening that don't. Sure. So the Pomodoro technique, the, the traditional one, is 25 minutes of um, intense working, no distractions. So you basically plan, okay, I'm going to work on, I don't know, whatever, your account. So for 25 minutes, that's what you're working on. Okay. Then you take a five-minute break. So you take a five-minute break, and what that means is you get up, you move, you get out of your space. Come back for another 25 minutes right? You can continue with that task or you can do something totally different. When you are given a certain period of time to do something, you'll be surprised how quickly you get it done. Okay. So 25 minutes and then five minutes, another break, 25 minutes, five minutes. After your four sprints, take a longer break. So take a 15 minute break. So that is the traditional 
way of using it. I actually do it 45 minute sprints and then longer breaks in between. So 45 minutes and then 10 minute breaks. 10 minute or 15, I can't remember. 15, I think. So 45 minutes and then 15 minute break. So that's how I do it. Again, adapt it to how you use it, how you want to use it. I remember when I started with the Pomodoro technique in the community, because we have a virtual co-working um, session, everyone was like, okay, but 25 minutes isn't enough time for me to get it done. And I was like, okay, I'll extend it for you then, but we're talking for longer in between then. So adapt it to what works for you. Um, that's with everything in life, guys. Like these are just ideas. Please don't take these as this is the only solution. Okay. Um, practice saying no. Say no. Oh my gosh. There's this whole thing about yes, man. And you must just say yes to everything and be open to this. Yes, I agree with that if you're very closed off. But you know what? It's great to be able to say no. It's a wonderful way to communicate. To just say, nope, that I can't do it. Like, look, you want to do it gracefully, right? But it's very important to be able to say no. Don't just take on things because someone asked you to do it. Okay? And communicate your boundaries effectively. Another important one. Firstly, know what your boundaries are. Like, create boundaries, right? That would be great. Then communicate them and figure out how you can do that to make clear expectations with your peers, with your family, with your clients, whoever it is. I mean, I switch my phone off at half past eight at night. I can, uh, like you'd swear I'm 84 years old, but that works for me. You know, like that means there's no tech. No one can contact me. Like, sorry, my phone was off. You should know this by now. Um, and it works. And then... Guys, do mind. So when we're talking about enhancing your personal life, mindful hobbies, do some yoga, do some, some meditation, journaling, nature. Like what is it that brings you joy, right? Do some creative things like paints. And this is clearly me. I'm the painter. So do all of these kind of things that get you outside of the traditional work. You want to create rituals for disconnection. Okay, so take a walk, take some personal time, listen to calming music, do a digital detox, or listen to upbeat music, whatever it is that, that you need, right? You want to prioritize meaningful connections too over superficial ones. So you want to spend time with your loved ones. Even if it's for shorter periods, spend that deep focused time with them. And then embrace the idea of micro adventures. So have mini escapes, go on day trips. So if you see, for instance, like this is what I do, um, networking activities or like a cool like industry event that you want to go to. And it's maybe not like close to where you are. Book the event and then book a hotel next to that event. So you can have... You know, that time away from your ordinary kind of space, that kind of thing, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic or, or expensive, but just something to just take you away out of your space, right? Some way that you can get pampered and your bed can get made for you, right? Like, it's a great experience to have your bed made for you. Um, and then do some spontaneous outdoor activities. So that just kind of prevents boredom. Get outside, get fresh air, go for a walk, go for a hike, swim in natural water. That's my favorite. Um, but just get out. I can't promote getting out enough. Okay. Um, then build your supportive systems. You want to delegate tasks, right? So, and when I say delegate tasks, beyond work. So household chores, running errands, you know, any um child care you want to free up your personal time and energy consider hiring help or bartering with friends and family okay communicate openly with your loved ones about the the work-life struggles that you have oh my goodness 
sorry, there was a flying ant. Um, and involve them in you finding solutions, right? So seek their support. You need to ask for help. Okay, and then connect with peers or mentors or people who understand and share your values and uh, especially understand the challenges of your work-life balance. So Deb has created this amazing community for community leaders. So guys, this is a perfect place to ask for help, okay? Holistic well-being, prioritize sleep. Oh my gosh, I love sleep. Sleep is everything. Set a sleeping time and a waking up time. I don't set an alarm. It's the best thing ever. Guys, if you set an alarm, stop. It's going to be very scary at first, but you will wake up in time. Your body already knows. Okay? The most liberating thing is not to wake up with an alarm. Yeah. Okay. The worst thing to do is to wake up with an alarm. How many of us are just like, oh my gosh. Like no one wants to get up to an alarm. I mean, I press snooze like seven of times. Course. So I don't know <laughs> that technically I'm like waking up with the alarm. I'm kind of saying alarm, quiet, <laughs> and I'm going back to yeah. sleep. So I don't know. Exactly. The, I don't know if the no alarm would work, but I've been really playing around with like going to sleep earlier so that I can wake up naturally earlier. I've been really working on that the last month and that's been helping me feel better with like stress and everything. So switch off your alarm. Just I'm telling you, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to try tomorrow and see how it goes. I'm telling you, it is amazing. I started doing it when I was working full time and I had to be at like at work at a certain time. I started doing it then. And I managed. So I'm telling you, it works. It's amazing. Do not wake up with an alarm. Okay. Um, things like nutritious meals, regular exercise. These are all things that are going to give you that, that boost, that energy. Um, it makes it easier for you to handle work without compromising your personal life. So look, I'm one to talk. I mean, you know, nutritious meals and regular exercise. That sounds amazing. But that's a whole nother journey for me. Um, but you'll notice what it is you're having for lunch and how you're feeling afterwards, right? So if you have a heavy, like, I don't know, lasagna and, you know, that kind of thing, you're going to feel it, right? You're going to have no energy for a meeting. You're going to be slurring through your words. So have a look at when to have those more exciting dishes maybe. You know, if you do feel like a pizza or lasagna, maybe have it after work or maybe have it on a day that you're not working. Um, just so that you're not like sacrificing everything delicious. So that's just one way to think about it. And then, guys, please ask for help. And I said this before, but therapy, coaching, anything more chronic that you are struggling with, ask for professional help. There is nothing wrong with going to a therapist or going to a coach. Now, just to differentiate between the two, therapy is more kind of going into your past and um, working through that, whereas coaching is, okay, what do you want to achieve? What's blocking you from achieving that? right? So therapy, coaching, please. It is so important to do these things. I've gone to therapists. I've gone to coaches. It's wonderful. It really makes a difference. Okay. So please, if you need it, get professional help. And you know what? If you need to go to a doctor and get on medication, do it. I am all for medication. I'm sorry. I'm terrible, but I really am. It really makes a difference. It really helps. So um, I've had clients who have tried it all and they get to the point where they're like, I don't know what else to do. And I'm like, well, medication is also an option. And it really makes a difference. Medication is a game changer. It was, it's been for me for the last two years for my anxiety and depression. Yeah. So yeah, I, I feel you when it's, it's, 
you know, it's a cultural thing, I think, that I, especially I grew up in where like there was this, we don't talk about this, you know, it's like a crutch if you need medication, yeah, yeah. whatever. And it's just, I'm working through those to like say no. And even my, uh, you know, I was had a meeting the other week with my um, psychiatrist and she said, I said, well, what about getting off of this? And she goes, but maybe this is what you need. If you're feeling better, then why are you going to try to take it away? And I, she made a good point. I was like, that's a good point. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong with it. So I, yeah. I think that's such an important thing. And, you, and I know that, I think you know that my importance of mental health and, and well-being is, is such an important topic for me because I struggled with it my whole life. So I really appreciated yeah. you putting that, making a note of yeah. it. And, and thank you for sharing that, Deb, because, I mean, come on, let's normalize this. Everyone's on medication. And if you're not, get on it. Like, no, okay, if you need it. If but, you need um, it, right. Like, I feel like there's people that, yeah. you know, maybe they just need the support of somebody to work through oh, something. And then there's other people that it's a longer term thing. So, yeah. For sure. For sure. And that's the thing. Like, it, it, it can be for a long time and it's okay if it's for a long time. It's okay if you're on it for life. It's also okay if you feel like, okay, do you know what? I've been okay for the past year. Maybe I can start weaning myself off. That's also okay. It's okay to not need these things. It's great to not need these things too because do you know what? You, you're you finding other ways to that work for you, right? We all have our limits, but we've got to listen to our bodies. We've got to listen to what's going on because I know when I was in my anxiety and I went on medication, I was just like, I don't know what this is. I'm scared to go to the shop. Like, this is ridiculous. I can't live, you know? And for me, that was really debilitating. And I was like, okay, well, I know what the next step is. Do I like it? No. You know, like there's so much resistance because everything in you is like, I must be able to cope with this. I'm stronger than this, you know? Um, but it's also okay. Like, it's okay to ask for help, to get what you need. Guys, medication, same as you, changed my life. Okay, cool. So, um, we're wrapping up. I think you, you have like one more slide or you come into an end. We've got about five more minutes. So I don't know. No. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's still so much. Um, <laughs> let's go to, well, let me get through this really quickly. Okay. So yeah. let's talk about burnout really quickly. So burnout, there are emotional shifts, physical manifestations and behavioral changes, right? One of the main things I didn't realize I was going through burnout these past few weeks, but I am. And it's lack of hope, lack of hope, lack of optimism. You know, you're just feeling like, ah, what is the point? What is the point? Right. You don't care about your achievements. You don't care about anything that's going on. You're irritable with everyone. Right. You're not enthusiastic anymore. So these things happen so quickly, guys. You need to get on them when they happen. Right. Physical manifestations, your body, oh my goodness, your body is the point of call, headaches, muscle tension, digestive issues, the same story with stress. Your foggy mind, you're going to struggle to concentrate for getting deadlines. Simple tasks are hard for you, making uncharacteristic mistakes. And then you've got this constant need for stimulation, for junk food or scrolling through content or anything that just kind of distracts you from this unease. And then you have the behavioral changes, right? So that's when we don't want to talk to anyone. That's when we don't care about what we feel like, what we look like, our meals, how we treat ourselves, right? And for some reason, even though we have no motivation, we work longer hours, we look for that refuge in our familiar routine. And it actually just adds fuel to the fire, right? So these are some of the early signs. 
Guys, strategies to avoid this. Embrace flow over hours. What this means is when you're in a state of flow, everything just goes, right? It's usually when you're doing something creative, something different. Go for that over hours, right? You don't have to clock hours. You're running your own community, right? Work with flow. Change the hustle culture. We spoke a little bit about that earlier. Focus on quality, on mindful work rhythms, right? We don't need to work all the time, every day, and craft your ideal work day. So check your energy levels at the beginning of the day, in the middle of the day, whatever it is, you need to see what you can handle. Build your boundaries. Say no. Create no work zones. Okay, so maybe you just have one work zone and everything else is no work. That's great. And again, invest in those personal rituals, those mindfulness practices. Craft your ideal work style. So this is where you want to personalize it and empower yourself. Delegate and automate. Guys, there is enough technology. There are enough people in the world who want to learn from you. Delegate, automate, and look for continuous growth because that's going to give you more energy, more excitement. That's going to increase your cup this is what burnout is about it's about filling your cup okay hey there it's deb shell and i am going to talk to you just a bit about email newsletters if you've been thinking you need an email newsletter you're probably right if you've been in an online community or you just want to grow your online business communicating directly to your audience it allows you to build relationships with, with them one email at a time you might think you don't have enough time, but I have some great news for you. ConvertKit can help you build, start building your, your ConvertKit can help you start building an email list with easy to set up templates, immediate analytics, and you can start for free. There's a 14 day trial. And once you get set up, uh, you can set up your uh, sequences, your email sequences that ConvertKit actually templates for you and let ConvertKit do the work. Uh, ConvertKit will, offer everything you need to build a successful email marketing campaign. They also have digital products available that you can create and onboarding sequences for your community members. You'll get a 14 day trial of ConvertKit's creator plan, no credit cards required when you use the show link notes. If you don't even want to set this up at all, uh, I've also added this service to my business so that I can help you and I've helped other community builders develop an email newsletter for their business. Uh, sign up with ConvertKit. It's the only email marketing tool just for creators and connects directly to your Mighty Network. If you are on the Mighty Networks and you have a community, uh, it is simple and easy to set up these integrations and I can certainly help you with that as well. Just open up your podcast app, scroll down to the show notes, click on start emailing today. And I'm excited to uh, learn more about how you jump into email marketing this year. Now back to the show for more community building tips. Positive relationships. Okay, you wanna you wanna embrace vulnerability, you wanna have safe spaces, you wanna be able to honestly be yourself without compromising, be authentic. This is where positive relationships come in. Shift your focus, power of now, from doing to being. Okay, practice gratitude and find meaning in your work. If you are not finding your work meaningful anymore, either you need to quit, you need to stop, or you need to pause. Okay, and then leverage technology. So Headspace, Calm, these are all great for managing stress. Time tracking tools, to-do list, rescue time, Evernote, Slack. Disconnect strategically. Do your digital detox, guys. So important. Okay. Do you have any questions? <laughs> I have so many questions. <laughs> Yeah, um, such a great job um, with all of this. And it's so vital for leaders to think about all of this and implement it. And uh, yeah, so I think that would be my question for you is, and I probably know the answer to this, but what do you feel like is a way for somebody to get started? If they've heard all this and are like, this is a lot and I need to start from square one, but I don't know where to start. Like what would be a starting point? 
<laughs> you know the answer to this. That's interesting. Work-life balance. Pick what you want to do, how you want to do it, and the hours you want to spend. That is the first thing you need to do. Cut off everyone else during those times. That four-day work week, three-day work week, half days, whatever it is, that is where you start and commit to it because do you know what? You can grow a business. You can grow a community with less time. So that's the first one. The other side of this is if you're really struggling with where do I start with this, please book a call with me because I would love to just figure out where you are and I would be happy to have that conversation with you to just say, do you know what? This is where you can start. And Please, like, don't think I'll charge you for it or anything. Connect with me and, like, let's have a conversation because I would love to support anyone in this community, anyone in this group who's really struggling. If you're teetering on the edge of burnout, please contact me. Please, okay? That's my website, boxcommunity.com. You can get a hold of Deb directly if you um, want to ask her for my contacts to please don't wait because guys life just continues to happen at us right we need to be able to manage how we deal with it and i think the biggest point i'm taking away with this is what you said earlier in the conversation around having um taking care of ourselves is the best way to grow and take care of our communities <laughs> Like we can't do that work of community building and community leadership and developing growth and belonging when we are not at our best or even 50%, you know, like if we're at that low level. Um, the one question I see in the chat was about um, what if I have a nine to five job and I'm starting um, a business? Like how do I, you know, find calm with all of that? <laughs> So sometimes when you're starting the business, that is where you are gaining energy, right? So I won't lie to you. It's a lot. I'll be honest. I say this, I've been saying this a lot recently. Starting your own business is the hardest job in the world. It is a long-term goal. And when I say long-term, I mean 10 years. Okay, this is the reality. So there's the information up front, do with it what you will. Okay, but also it gives you the grace to say, do you know what? I've got 10 years. I've got 10 years. It goes fast. Right? 10 years goes really fast. I started my first yeah. class in 2011 <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit. I was like 12 years ago. How did that happen? <laughs> you know, like... Exactly. It really does, you know, and, and I think not worrying about, you know, getting it right, because you're not going to get it right the first time. No, no. <laughs> At or all. The or, or the third. third sometimes. <laughs> right. I'm and on like my know, 17th business idea, right? 100%. <laughs> yes, exactly. And like, you're still figuring it out. Right. I mean, I, I know I am. It's like, I'm in year three and I'm just like, okay what happens now what happens next you know and every year is going to be different every day is going to be different but when you're in the stage when you're building your business you're usually in a very excited stage so it's giving you energy right i would say the balance is very important if you can oh this is a tricky thing to say out loud but if you can do the bare minimum in your full-time job. Now, what I'm assuming is you're really good at your job and you can do it quite easily. Do the bare minimum so that you have that energy. This is what I did. This is what I did. This is what I did when I was at my corporate job because when I was at my corporate job, I had I had West Coast hours because I was a West Coast sales rep. And so I ended up um, doing my chunks of like business development in the morning. So I would do some morning reading before I would go to work. And then the weekends I would like have what I called workshop weekends where I would like just sit and diverge into this like 
all the content and videos and taking notes. And I loved it. It was like, it lit me up because it was something that I finally was excited about that wasn't I'm not complaining about work because now I'm focused on this thing that's going to take me out of this job. And 100%. I quit my job in 2019 and I didn't have, I mean, I had a kind of a plan, but then that went to crap. With the <laughs> pandemic. So like somehow I'm still making it from 2020 to now being 2024. I'm figuring yeah. it out. Um, I'm learning how, how to, yeah, how to do it and how to do it in a way that makes sense and is, in my values and all of those things, but it does take so much time and being willing and open to that flexibility and just saying, this is life and this is what I want to do. And if you're passionate about it, it's going to, you'll find the time and it won't drain you. It'll, it'll light you up. You're and right. Um, it might drain you either way. So. True. I mean, it, at a point. <laughs> but in the beginning stages, yes, you're right. And that's exactly what I did, right? Exactly the same thing. I left my job in 2019 um, and started, had sort of a plan from 2020. And again, it's that same story. It's like every year slowly getting closer, dealing with a lot though, because like I say, having your own business, oh my gosh, don't do it. Um, but what I would suggest during this period, don't underestimate how much support you need and not only mental and emotional and physical, but like how much financial support, how much family support I moved back home, you know, um, I'm, I'm now looking after my folks and that kind of thing, but it's giving me the space to be at home and to not have to worry about pushing this thing and getting investments and this, that, and the other. Go slowly. Have the grace to go slowly. The slower you go with this, the less mistakes you're going to make, you'll still make mistakes, but you will be more willing to learn from them as opposed to just give up. Right? So please, if you're starting your business, make sure you have that support. If you don't, you can't quit your job. I'm sorry, like that's just real talk. You can quit your job once you have built up enough savings for you to be able to. And please don't feel like you're a failure if you go back to work. I've done that also many times. Start a business, go back to work, start another business, go back to work. <laughs> Very normal. So, yeah, um, I know we've gone Thank over you. time. No, that's okay. Quite, quite. It was such a great conversation. I'm so excited to share this with the podcast. If you're listening on the podcast, I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode. Please, please, please uh, contact and Nikki, if you feel like that is something that you'd like to do because she's an amazing person. So truly supportive. And so I really appreciate you being here, Nikki. And uh, for those who joined us live, thank you so much. And uh, that will wrap us up for today. Um, so thank you for being here, Nikki. Thank you so much for having me. And I hope I haven't, haven't overwhelmed everyone with so much information. There is a lot to talk about on this topic, I know. Luckily, we're going to be breaking this interview in this conversation the, the, into two episodes for the podcast uh, to give people a little bit of space to start working on how they're going to implement this. So let us know if you have questions. Uh, excited to share more with you. We're going to stop for today. Have a great uh, rest of your week, everyone. And I hope to see you soon in the Community Builders with Purpose community. Take care. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Community Strategy Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you're following or subscribed wherever you listen. This helps me because I know you won't miss an episode and it helps you because you will always get the episodes right away. This podcast has produced by myself, Deb Shell, independent owner of Find Calm Here. If you really enjoyed this episode, I am looking for some Apple podcast reviews. Um, I'm going to explain to you how to do that right now. 
first if you go to your Apple podcast and click on the circle with the three dots on the top right corner. Then make sure you're following the show. Second, uh, next click go to show and scroll down to where it says ratings and reviews. Then right above about, you will see a little square with a pencil. Next to the square, you'll see write a review. Make sure you save the review before closing out your screen. I would love if you could do that for me. If you don't want to say anything nice, then don't say, don't leave a review. <laughs> Uh, I hope that you enjoy this podcast and this season, and I hope you're finding calm in any day, even today or tomorrow, any day, moment, even afternoon, today, Saturday at four, find calm until the next time. Take care. Bye.